We are here with one of my favorite songwriters, uh, favorite artist, Mr. Lewis Bryce. How are you, sir? I am doing fan fantastic, man. I'm glad to be here at CRS this week. So, all right. So tell us, you have been a very busy man over this past year. Give our friends a rundown of everything you've been doing. Well, I mean, it's a long list, you know. When I, you know, when I get going, I, I decide to dive in, not trot to it, you Please know. Down. So, so um, in the past year of my life, I think I've seen you guys last. Uh, I think I got, I got I've been married. Bought a new house. Um, I got a kid on the way coming in May, a, a little girl. And now we have a song on the radio, Product Of, which I looked today, I think on media based charts is around uh, mainstream 69 or something like that. Uh, so we're cruising right on the charts. And uh, we got a whole brand new record out. This the, and the whole title track of it is Product Of. And it's a big culmination of. Uh, where I've been in my life and what I've been right for the past couple years. And so for me, in my opinion, it's one of my best arts of work I've ever had in my life. And it's out there. It's 10 songs. Of, uh, it's, a good, it's a good story if you follow it all the way through. And uh, it's got some of my favorite songs. And we just get to have a good time on it. And also, I have it on vinyl, too. So I put the whole thing. So if you, all you vinyl collectors out there. Yeah, talk about that decision. A lot of artists are putting their albums out now on vinyl. It's coming back. Uh, what made you decide to go that route? Honestly, for me, so this is my first full-length 10-song album. I've done an EP back in the day. Um, when I first started, when I did an EP, it was the best X ever EP. It did, it did, it did well, but we just put that on, on CD and stuff like that. And over the past years, we've done singles. And then finally, I got to the point of where, you know, I wanted to put out a full-length album. And I think my fans wanted it, and so I wanted it too, and I've, I've just got so many songs. And so I put it out there. I was like, I figured if this is our first record, we're going to do it all the way, cut no corners. So I was like, hey, let's put this out on vinyl, put it on a real thing, because I know there's collectors out there. If this is my first project, I want it to be special, and I want it to be documented, and I want it to be on vinyl, because for me, if you go, I, I'm, a, I'm, a vinyl, I'm a vinyl listener, that quality can't beat it. Man, a little bit of scratch in there, it's perfect. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That is so cool. Product of, I love that title. I love that title. I love the idea of, it's almost like Montgomery Gentry, something to be proud of. Like, what makes you? What, what? the things that form you. And I think country music is uniquely a genre that lets an artist talk about those kinds of things. It, it, you're correct You're correct about that. So for me, I'm very proud of where I'm from. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina, small town, and uh, in between Columbia and Myrtle Beach, more or less. But I'm, I'm and this whole record, it shows where I'm from. I'm from a very swampy kind of area. You know, grew up in church. So you, you hear the soulfulness of that right there. But I also, I love rock and roll, that little southern rock kind of world in between from you know, Sweet Home Alabama to, and just all your, all your southern kind of rock bands. That's all kind of, that gritty sound comes into this record. And the song product of itself, and it, it talks about, it's kind of a quick story about how my parents uh, raised my brother and I in a small town with the, you know, with the, with the, with the morals and stuff of growing up in a small town of love. And so he was blue collar, he was an electrician. My mama worked and helped him run the business, stuff like that. And so for me, it, it's awesome. To, and and that's, that's how they raised my brother and I. And so we were there, it's been great. Were they encouraging of your musical dreams? They very much were. Uh, that wasn't the first uh, option for me. Uh, they, they definitely were always supporting us to go to school and they were trying to get us to do this, that, and the other, but music runs in our family. My, my mama sings, my daddy sings, he's still a quartet, my brother sings. And then, um, but we, are, we weren't always into music, you know, we always loved music, but we always, you know, I wanted to be a chiropractor at one point in my life. A chi Wait, okay, we're gonna yeah, stop a minute. I know, right? We're gonna talk about that for just a second, because <laughs> yeah. I have family members that swear by chiropractic. Yeah. Uh, why chiropractic? Well, I, I love science, and so somehow I, I excelled pretty well in biology and anatomy and stuff like that, and so, um, I, I, one of my buddies, one of my best friends, Corey King, back in the day in high school, he went to chiropractic school and he told me a lot about it. I was like, you know what I felt? Sounds like something I'd want to do. And so I took off on a venture uh, to get my associates in science and then I was going to go, <coughs> excuse me, to chiropractic school. And um, well, they changed the curriculum the year I got my associate's degree in science. So I had to get more school and I was like, eh, I'm going to go to Nashville, be a kid and go play a little bit of music. So. Yeah, but, uh, I love that. I love that. It's not often you get an artistic person with a science brain. It's usually <laughs> that lottery usually draws one or the other. No, <laughs> you're fine. It's uh, like you said, that red eye coffee. And then, did you get in today? Did you just get in? Uh no. I've been. I live here. I've right. been here, and uh, so uh, <coughs> I just get to catch my throat every once in a while. Yeah. It must have been that uh, that coffee. We got any water up there? Yeah, yeah, sure. No, I, I, I. It's really unique. Really unique, and and I'm. 
Do you, this is just one of those odd questions that comes to me. Yeah. Do you see any overlap in how you approached science with how you approach songwriting? You know what, in a sense, I've never been asked that question, but there is, because there, there is an equation, and the um, thing is with music, the equation is always different, and but that, that, and that's also with a lot of different maths. You know, you got your different variables of science. There's always different hypotheses of how to do something, yeah. but there's but you do the experiments and see what works, right? So that's the kind of thing with uh, with music. You have a hypothesis, you have an idea of a song, you think it's gonna be great, but until you put it out there, see if it works, you don't really know until you test it. So, um, and then also whenever you're thinking about it, for me there is an equation. In my equation, everybody's equation is different. My equation is talking about what I believe in, my experiences, my family. I'm very proud of my family, where I'm from. And uh, and my experiences, and they go all the way back through heartbreak, to falling in love, to now, now I'm writing songs about you know, a soon-to-be soon, soon to be kid. Um, it's a, that, that's my equation, is life, love, and, and uh, it went my experiences. So. I love it. Lewis Bryce, a pleasure. Thank you so much.